Hey guys, I'm Cody, editor by Pass the Light Pro, and if you watched my latest Minecraft cinematic comparison, then I'm sure you're wondering how to get the modified V10.2 up and running for yourself. Well, today, we'll be moving through all the adjustments, even the ones that I made post-tutorial, until we make it to the ending product. I'm not gonna lie, there are quite a few lines of code to alter, so let's waste no time, let's get started. First, have your fresh copy of the SUS V10.2 Preview 1 Ultra Shader unzipped and ready to work with on the desktop. Access the folder, access the shaders folder, and step one, let's get POM fully up and running. Locate gbuffers underscore terrain dot fsh. Using notepad plus plus, open it up. From here, find line 24. Remove the two slashes. Next, scroll down to line 308. Let's extend the distance of POM. Change the number to 90.0f. And though I may not say it much after this, saving your progress is a given. So save and exit. Step two, let's focus on the parallax waters. Locate gbuffers underscore water dot fsh. Open it up. Scroll down to line 293. To enable the 3D water, remove the two slashes. Next, scroll up to line three. Change the number instead to 0.95F. Save and exit. Step three, let's extend the shadow distance. Locate composite.fsh, open it up. Scroll down to line 36. Remove the current number and replace it with 340.0f. Composite1.fsh, open it up. Line 38. Just like we did, replace the number with 340.0f. Step 4. It's time to soften the shadows. Find line 25. Remove the two beginning slashes. Now, scroll way down to line 822. Change the number to 0.18f. Step 5. Let's change the water color. Locate gbuffers underscore water dot fsh. Open it up. Scroll down to line 353. Listen carefully. Change the red, green, blue, and brightness control values to 0.4F, 0.9F, 1.2F, and 230.0F. Step 6. Sky Color. Locate composite1.vsh. Open it up. Line 142. Change these RGB values instead to 1.0F, 1.7F, and 4.9F. Step 7. Let's give the SUS a little bit more warmth. Scroll up to line 105. Change the second number to 4.00. Step 8. Let's move on to weather color. Scroll down to line 177. Change the values to 0 0.9, 1.2, 2.4, and the last one, 0.10F. Step 9. Let's fix our rain reflections. Locate gbuffers underscore terrain at fsh. Open it up. Line 333. We have two very important steps in this case, so do pay attention. Change this star sign to a plus sign. Change this number that I'm highlighting to 0.40f. Step 10. Let's adjust the rain fog. Locate final.fsh. Open it up. Line 723. Change the number to 0.110F. Step 11, which is our last step. Let's fix the rain. In this case, the best method I've found is to first go and download a copy of the Continuum 1.0 shader, and second, replace both V10.2's weather files with the Continuums. Since the Continuum rain is truly fixed, it's as simple as just replacing the files and having them work. Well, after all that, I don't know how you're still awake, but if you truly did make it through all this, then give yourself a pat on the back for a job well done, because this was seriously quite a bit of adjustments. 
But anyways, there's one thing I'd like to touch on before I end this video. I mainly went over adjusting visual aspects of the shader to link with the modified V10.2 in the comparison. So if you'd like to learn how to slow down waving terrain, moving water, clouds, etc., then my tutorials will be annotated above. And yes, if you have any questions, then do leave them in the comment section down below, and I'll get back to you. Alright, if this Zeus V10.2 modified tutorial was of any use to you, then do hit that like button. And before you go, don't forget to check out my channel for some more Minecraft tutorials, some pro quality cinematics, and a bunch of other videos that you shouldn't miss. Anyways, I'm Cody, and this is Past Life Pro, where creativity is always a part of my life, as it will be for yours. Alright, see you guys!